Okay, so I originally recorded this and then realized I should go through all the different icons. So I'm not a pro at this app. I just started this week, but I'll show you what I know. So there's this little section that looks like a Digimon evolution chart. That's where you're going to get your scenes. That's where you can put certain items to be invisible. This is where we can voxel merge items as well as to get primitives. Okay, so when you open a new shape, it's going to automatically open the gizmo tool, which will come in handy later. I'll show you how to do that. But first, I'm just kind of showing you, like, look, this is what you can do. The primitives, you can voxel merge them together. You can get other shapes, such as this. You can move them around by touching the small beige circle. You can resize them using the big beige circle. You can bring them this way using the blue circle and then this way using the green one and then this way using the red one and once again the large beige one and then the small beige one to move the item because this is the most important and then you can spin around using the same colors but for the circles the big circles instead of the small ones um, and then using these squares, you can also move them sort of in the same way as the small beige one. So using the lave or love, you can make shapes like this. I find they come in very handy use for um, BGD bodies especially. And then we are going to look at the cylinder because this is a really good example for the hole option. Look, so if you click the hole option before you validate an item... You can make it hollow like this automatically, which is the easiest way to do it. And you do have to validate an item before you work on it. The validate option will come up at the top of the screen automatically, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so now I'm, I'm just going to show examples of the different brushes. I have the symmetry on, which are the two little beige triangles on the left side. So I use the brush option now I'm using the clay option now I'm using smooth okay now I'm going to use flatten and you can change the size and the power of each of these on the left side so this is layer and this is crease just gonna use this to doodle a little crappy face just for fun um, I'll have a video showing how to actually do faces later so next we're gonna go to trim so this will slice an item in half any way you want on uh, the left side has all the different options and then we have split so this creates a one item into multiple items so it's like trim but you keep both sides of the item then we have the lave flop <laughs> i don't know the pottery tool again and then we have inflation which i've been using this around like the eyes and the lips on my other sculpts but look you can even put it like on a nose or anything it's a fun little tool and then let's just play around with th this for like a couple more seconds before i get to the actual video but this is how the actual process when sculpting the face will be. It'll look busted at first, but you gotta trust the process. <laughs> okay, so I was gonna make a tutorial for my friend, but I figured I'd just upload it for everyone. So here's the body I'm currently working on for my own personal project. You can take it apart. It's multiple pieces. It's really fun. But for the tutorial, I'm going to be doing this in separate parts in real time from scratch so let's start a new file there we go so when you start a new file it'll start off as a sphere i'm going to go to the lav section um i don't know it's the one used for pottery we're going to get like a general shape of our hips since we're going to be using the sphere as our waist joint so just kind of resize it as you want it. Make sure that it's even and flush with the, oops. Okay, you can just go back on the undo button to fix that. 
on the little beige circle you can use that to move the whole thing as well as the large beige beige circle to change the shape of everything without ruining the specific shape you have so that's the general resize and then we're going to voxel merge these together and we're going to take our smooth tool and smooth it all together so we get this more rounded shape right now our piece is sort of like one of the game pieces from the game sorry or like a chess piece or something so using the blue button on the reshape we're going to be making it thinner so it looks more like a body and then the red um setting to make it a bit wider so just kind of get it where you want it because the next thing we're going to be doing is making the legs so i'm going to go in the primitive section and click sphere and just kind of resize it using that beige resizing tool to get it just where the where we want it size wise then you can kind of move around the canvas to get it where you want it on the larger hip piece you can resize reshape anything uh, next we're going to be copying that and you can use that in the same place that we use the voxel merging and you just click those two little squares that are on top of each other and it'll copy the exact same piece so now get that piece where you want it make sure it's even with the other ones make any small adjustments you need to make you can see here i made them a bit uneven so i'm fixing it oh and the section where you get the voxel merge and the primitives is in the little icon on the top corner that sort of looks like a digimon evolution chart so click that and you'll see all of it okay so i'm not going to be keeping this next part but i'm just gonna do it to show you so to get these kind of cutouts from your primitives you want to go to the voxel merge section but click on you, both of your objects you're going to be doing so in this case it would be the hips and the thighs but for your thighs you're gonna click the button the like the eye button to make it invisible and then you're gonna voxel merge it okay so now we're gonna pick the cylinder oops i turned it when i wasn't supposed to okay so this is gonna be our leg so we're gonna get it as thin as we want it and then we are going to make it really, 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 really long using the green tab on the resizing tool. And I personally do really, really long legs in my art, so don't, don't make it as long as this for yours. So I'm just going to continue to play around with it until I get it where I want it. Kind of putting it up to the sphere, trying to get it perfect. Or I guess not perfect, but like where I want it. Um, and then I'm just going to quickly copy it just to see what it looks like on the other side. I'm actually going to delete the other leg in a bit, uh, because, um, the symmetry doesn't work in like that way. You, they, it works if it's on the same layer, but I don't want it on the same layer because you can accidentally mess up one of them. So I'm getting rid of it for now. And... Oh, you can see me splitting them. So we talked about the split tool earlier. And this is how hard it is to use. It's so hard. Or maybe it's just hard because I'm on an iPad and I'm just using like an Apple Pencil. But you'll see the process. And I will come back and just copy the leg later. But for now, it's just not needed. We don't need to use this other leg. It doesn't really give us any benefits. So, you can see me struggling. Oh. Okay, so we go into the Digimon Evolution chart again, and we hide the second leg. After I realize that, oops, I can mess up the other leg if I don't get rid of it. Oh, and um, Nomad Sculpt actually will automatically ask you to save your projects. So that's what you just saw right now, and then just, I, I don't know, I just named it whatever, who cares? And then using the smooth tool to kind of connect these pieces better. Okay, so like any sculpting, this is going to be rough at first. But hey, it's part one. I don't even know how many parts this is going to take. But you're going to see this little 
weird cylinder blob with a boob slowly turn into an actual leg. Not today, but, you know, maybe in the next video, hopefully. And we're going to be using mainly the brush tool and the move tool, which I didn't show, but like, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just kind of pick your size and strength and you can move stuff around. And then you can see, I kind of don't like how the jointing looks kind of right here. And I do attempt to fix it. Once again, I am new. Like, it'll, it'll eventually look nice. Like how it did on my personal project I showed at the start of the video. But, you know, like, stuff takes a while. And I'm using the move tool right now. And it's kind of making this specific shape. But we will fix this. I am not doing this shape on purpose. Um, so I'm just gonna try smoothing it out. Seeing what we can do, getting some more clay in there, trying to make it look like a Ken doll. <laughs> and then once again, getting the smooth tool again, smoothing it out. Attempting to fix it. Uh, which isn't a big deal, it doesn't matter if you mess up because you can always use the undo button and you can always fix it. So I used the flatten tool, then I went back to the smoothing brush. Eh, it looks better. I'm just going to leave it here for now. It looks decent enough that, like, I'm not mad at it. Then we have the brush tool again. I'm going to give her some belly fat. And then I'm going to smooth it out again. Continuing to smooth it until <laughs> it's fully blended in. So I will be giving her more shape eventually, but that is just not right now. Right now, we're just going to give her like the teeniest, teeniest little bit of a connection between her legs and her hips. Kind of, it, it gives that more like snatch shape on the waist by doing this. And we are going to smooth this all out. You can see I have the smooth tool on the highest setting. Um, I find that I prefer it the most, even though sometimes I mess up my own projects using it. So here we go, continuing to smooth things out, and then continuing to work on the leg areas. So now we're going to use the gizmo tool. We're just kind of moving it about, making it a tiny bit shorter, making it, you know, more normal human size. Uh, now we're going to sort of, you know, get rid of the other leg because I finally got sick of it. And now we're going to be moving this up a bit. I think I want the joints a bit higher um, since it will allow for a better possibility to have that extra size area <laughs> that extra area for the elastic to move through if it were printed and then we're going to be using the move tool to kind of get more shape to this leg i'm bringing it in near the knee bringing it out towards the inner thigh and outer thigh and then i'm going to be shaping the calves and the ankles so right around here, I do have troubles with the symmetry tool, trying to get everything how I want it. So I do decide to turn it off, which like sometimes you need. <laughs> and you can see very soon, once I do turn it off, I do have a lot less issues with trying to get things where I want it. You can see with it on right now, I have to keep moving stuff back and forth since it's not moving the way I want it to, but now it's turned off and everything is starting to get more the way that you would expect it to look on a normal BJD. One issue I've really had with the symmetry tool is that it's not really working the way you would expect it to. Um, and I think some of you guys may have the same issue but I think it's more so an issue with the fact that it's a iPad app 
if you are doing this on, say, a computer, you might not have this issue. But hey, we're sculpting a whole BGD on an iPad. So, you know, sometimes you just got to do that extra work to manually get everything even. And you can see once I turn to the side, the shape is kind of just wonky. So I'd start moving stuff around with the move tool again. Trying to get everything to look like a, you know, like a more normal, quote unquote, human body. Um, not that normal really exists, but just like, you know, proper proportions for what I am doing. Oh, and I was using the brush and the smooth tool. I forgot to mention that until now. So still using this move tool, looking for anything that's uneven. You can see the leg is starting to really take shape. And then going back to the move tool to try to get that calf definition. I, I mean, <laughs> anyone that's seen my art, I do do very pronounced calves. And you can start to see that a lot right now where I'm making that ankle smaller, making that calf bigger. Uh, eventually I will be making the thighs bigger. There it is. <laughs> I think the thighs can actually be bigger now that I'm looking back on it. So I mean, see that in a future video. Probably once we get the butt on the torso done, then we'll have more room to do the actual thighs to a larger size. But for now, this is really the limit to what we can do since it's about to cut off in the back. And that's really just not what we want right now since it would negatively affect the posing. You can see I'm moving it around to kind of show that, yeah, no, if we move it back anymore, it's just not really going to get that same sturdiness when it's standing up because without it, it increases the chances of the body falling backwards because it wouldn't have that extra support. Then we are just kind of moving stuff around using the gizmo tool, getting it where I want it because you do have to remember that another leg is going to go here even though it's not visible. Okay, so now let's get to the bust part. So go to that pottery tool again. And for this, you want it to have it on the curve air. Oh, I messed up. You want it to be on the curve setting. And then just kind of, yeah, get just the general shape you want. Oops, I messed up. So you don't need to do the neck or anything because we can do that with the primitive tools get the gizmo and just kind of reshape it how you want it move it around to how you want it you don't really have to worry about anything else because we will be working on this further later um so you can use these little dots to kind of move everything around get it where you want it you can see that i'm making it smaller and more snug to the waist and hip piece and for this body, I will be aiming to make a, a fab body. So here is the cylinder. Using the gizmo tool and kind of moving around my canvas, I am getting it to the correct size. I just re-listened to this one last piece of audio and I just realized me playing with like my pop socket on my phone sounds so weird. So using all these little tools on the gizmo, we are going to be shifting everything on the neck where we want it. Do not get it to the exact size that you want the neck because we will be adding a primitive sphere on top of the cylinder to be that proper neck joint. So if you wanted those neck joints where the neck kind of cuts off and the neck is instead a sphere joint, then you can kind of just do the same process, but use the um, invisible voxel merge tool I showed you at near the beginning for the hip joints, but do that on the neck and then place that sphere there as that joint. Um, unfortunately, that's not, I'm unfortunately, that's not the jointing I'm going to be doing on mine. I'm going to be doing more kind of normal 
more average jointing on here. I do not have the skills to do anything more complex. <laughs> so once again, just adjusting everything. I feel like the neck is a very important part on the body because um, of the way that the head can throw off proportions depending on your neck. You don't want it to be too long or too short, especially with dolls where you don't really get that um, squishiness of fat. So on a doll, it's very stiff and it looks unnatural if the proportions are off. So here's the sphere I was just talking about. And we're just kind of resizing it, adjusting it to the correct size. And then you can see if you click both of these tools and then voxel merge them, with them both being visible, you can get them to all connect. Then I have the smoothing tool and I'm just kind of smoothing this all together, making it look clean and flush. So we're going to be doing the chest next. And you'll just kind of see me get a sphere and then kind of copying it and then getting it all into position and shaping it and all that. You can also get the same sphere and then use the split tool to cut them in half and then place them on. But it's really up to you. Um, on this one, I'm just using the full sphere. On the other one that I showed at the start of the video, my own personal project, I did split them. But it's entirely up to you, whichever one's easier for you. And I was thinking, like, what am I going to do with this body if I finish it? So I guess uh, I'll try to upload it onto Thingiverse for free. But I do think it would be fun to have it be available to order, like, actual 3D versions of it. But I don't have a 3D printer. So I guess just the thingiverse. And then like I would love to get any like tags if anyone does like edit or print the file. So on thingiverse you can allow things to be remixed which is to be edited by other people. As well as you can have stuff available to 3D print for free. Um, and then depending on the item you can also allow for people to profit off of the file. I'm probably not going to be doing that for that, for my original file or the remixes, because I don't see a point. Um, I do know for the robot BJD on Thingiverse that was really popular a couple years ago, there was a shop that would do mini resin printings of her and then the profit would go to a charity, which I think is really cute. Like, that's really sweet. But I, I know my doll's not going to be nice enough to warrant any kind of further action like that. <laughs> and that's not to put my work down or anything. It's just, like, I am making this body only for the tutorial. Um, Like, I might print out a copy in, like, PLA or ABS. Ooh, maybe resin if someone does it, like, cheap enough. I am getting one of my heads I sculpted on Nomad printed in resin, and I have no idea how much it's going to cost, but I expect it to be cost a lot. <laughs> like, probably $70 to $200. <laughs> um, and I have, oh yeah, I tried to do some nip knops, and I don't like how they turned out. You can see me kind of shift the model around and realize that I hate how they look. So I just do the undo button and get rid of them all together. Uh, nip knops are just so hard to sculpt. It's so annoying. I just give up. So now we're just kind of smoothing everything out. You can see the proportions are still kind of janky. Like those collarbones stick out way too much. That back still looks like that. We're going to go work on it right now. Oh, wrong tool. <laughs> Good thing there's an undo button. So, once again, adding some more definition. Getting it all ready. S using the smooth tool. I hate, um, the one thing I don't like about the brush is when you're using the smooth tool and everything kind of looks like a 
brain. <laughs> so we're getting these shoulder blades here, getting the back there. Um, and then I really like to use the crease tool to get further definition. Sort of like how what I'm about to do right now with the crease. Yeah. And then just kind of bloop, bloop, bloop. And um, Nomad does have a lot of options for different clay colors. I do just have it on the standard gray setting, which I don't really do for heads. Because um, it's nice to see the resin color that I imagine the head in the body. However, like, I don't... Eh. So we can see me trying to fix this hunchback. Uh, with the smooth tool, eventually we just go to the move tool and we just kind of bloop and then get it small to go bloop and it looks a bit better. Oh, <laughs> there we go. So just kind of getting it back out there since your back does kind of still curve out. I'm still trying to capture that. And then moving everything out a bit, getting these shoulder. Ah, I forgot what they're called. Shoulder blades, there we go. Getting these a bit out. Getting this waist a tiny bit more in. And then getting a circular tool. Because I'm going to show you how to do the shoulder joints. So we're going to get it in the size that we want it in. Boop. And just kind of get it in here. And then we'll do that same thing where we copy it and put it on the other side and blah, 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 blah. So you use that, those two little squares on top of each other, get it. Oops, I turned it. And then use the little beige circle to get on the other side and then just kind of eyeball it. Get them as even as you can. I guess the real benefit of using 3D is that everything can be perfectly symmetrical. But um, once again, this is an app on an iPad. I think it might also be available on phones. Can't really say. But um, unlike an application on a computer or a laptop, um, it is just not as powerful. So I'm just going to right here now accept that the symmetry tool is just not going to be up to par. And I'm just going to try to not to rely on it. And instead just kind of get it as even as I can using my eyes. Which is probably good practice for sculpting in real life too. So I'm just using these smooth tools to kind of get everything where I want it. Uh, yeah, so when you cut out something using the... Um, voxel merge it does kind of leave everything kind of rough so you do want to smooth it out oh no looking back on this this is really uneven so i'm recording this at a different time than i actually did this oh no oh no it just gets more uneven <laughs> okay so this is gonna be a big part of each of these videos is getting everything even um which I mean, that's probably a good thing to show, right? Like, it's good to show that not everything is perfect and that I'm learning with you, hopefully. I hope there's lots of people that are watching this that want to get into 3D sculpting and only have an iPad or a phone. So here we have using the move tool, kind of getting everything more even, and it's so much better. Oh, it looks so much better. And then we're going to quickly, I'm going to show you how to start doing the innards for the jointing on a bust doll piece. So using the tools I already showed you, we're going to kind of get it all perfect and whatnot. So we're not going to be finishing all the jointing on this piece today, but I will be showing basically all of it um enough that using what i show you you can just finish it on your on your own 
but in the next video I will still show it just in case. And I'm going to be trying to finish all of these videos in one week since the only reason I have time to do this is because my university is on strike so I'm just sitting at home doing nothing. My practicum's on hold and I'm so bored. <laughs> So here we are continuing to kind of move everything around, smooth it out, trying to get it more symmetrical, kind of looking at the item from different angles to make sure that everything looks the way we want it to. And now we're going to get a cylinder because I'm going to show you how to do the stringing channels. So it's basically the same thing we did for the neck, but we're going to get it to be much smaller and for this specific thing I'm going to be doing in two parts where I do the channel in the main part of the body separately from the neck because I want the channel in the main part of the body to be very big and very easy to access while we can't really do that with the neck because it is so small and fragile I will be making it only big enough to fit the elastic. And then the way that I have it planned is that you would have the knot of the elastic in the chest because I really, really hate it when it's in the head because it makes changing heads, changing faces, makes getting on clothes, everything. It makes everything harder. And it's just, it's so stupid. So here we have, like I'm showing you, the channel doesn't go all the way into the neck. And I'm going to be ending it here. We will continue in the next video for the other channels in the bust.